In the documentary, we see Tom, a.k.a. Spot, take part in Mr. Puppy Europe in Antwerp. What goes on at this pageant? Glad you asked. It's a mix of beauty pageant, talent show, and must be a British word, Crufts. And in this BBC documentary, we see David, a.k.a. Bootbrush, talk to a camera in a leather dog mask, as we then see two pups, humans, walking through London, pretending to use the lampposts for their bathroom. The world is an insane asylum. People's thinking is busted. And as we see the recession of Christian influence, we are going to see the growth of really bad thinking. And if you and I are not careful, we might respond very wrongly to this. Why? Because the reality is, as crazy as we think that particular story is, I promise you, these men who think that they're puppies and everybody who is an unbeliever, brace yourself for this, thinks you, dear Christian, are that crazy. As crazy as you think that the issues of the day are men who want to be women, a white woman who thinks she's a black woman, a man who doesn't think his arm should be attached to his body so he gets it amputated. You go, that's crazy. That's precisely how they feel about us. The gospel is absolute foolishness to the unbeliever. Beloved, beloved, let us remember that amid our efforts to avoid anti-intellectualism and in our efforts to avoid slothfulness in study, that nevertheless the heart of the message that we study, that we learn, that we live, that we teach, that we preach, that we bear witness to, is absolute insanity to the world. And the day that our message stops being foolishness to the Greeks and to this world is the day that our message has lost its purity and lost its power. Consider the message of the cross. 2,000 years ago, an invisible cosmic transaction took place on a cross. It was there where the infinite God stuffed himself into a finite body, having lived a perfect life for over three decades, was then mocked, beaten, abused, tortured, spat upon, and crucified on a cross as an act of propitiation, a payment for the sins of those who would repent and put their trust in Jesus Christ. <laughs> the world thinks that it's absolutely crazy. And this is nothing new. And that is why, as we continue to see a darkening world, if we're not careful, we might be inclined to stop preaching that foolish message and simply engage with their intellect. The word of the cross is to those who are perishing foolishness. Paul punctuates that in verse 19 when he says, For it is written, and he quotes now from Isaiah 29, verse 14, and says, It has always been this way. Man has always sought to find his own way of religion, to find his own philosophical, ideological way to approach life. Man has always looked within himself for his own answers, and he has looked to the world around him. And it has always been this way. And he quotes now Isaiah 29, verse 14, and God is the speaker in this text. Please note what God says. God says, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. Man's own efforts to concoct his own way by which he may live his life in a meaningful way that is autonomous from God, independent from God, and how man would seek to commend himself before a holy God in his own efforts or in his own 
ideology, in his own worldview, and in his own thinking. God says, I will destroy it. I will expose it. I will judge it. I will damn it. The question is, what is God's modus operandi to accomplish that task? You and I could fall into a ditch and we could start thinking, they need their bad thinking corrected by some good thinking. That thinking is not biblical. People's thinking does not improve naturally. They cannot discern spiritual things naturally. Uh, you can teach somebody a reasonable message. If there's stuff, there has to be a stuff maker, and that's good information. You uh, might share with the unbeliever that they cannot have any standard of morality if there is not a standard bearer. Otherwise, everything is preference, and that's a good message to share. But nobody will ever respond to those two messages having received some intellectual input and become a believer. You say, wait a second, if they actually acknowledge that God exists, they're not a Christian? That's right. Richard Dawkins could state, I actually believe that God exists, and I actually believe that Jesus is the only true and living God is represented in the Bible. Does that make him a believer? No, he's still a fist shaker. Just because we perhaps are able to reason with somebody to a degree, to help them understand something that is logical, even if we could accomplish that, that doesn't make them a believer. The sovereign call of God is the only way by which those who are in the world who consider the gospel, the word of the cross to be foolishness, it is the only way that their eyes will be opened. It is the only way that their ears will be opened. It is the only way that their hearts will be opened. It is the only way by which they will be drawn into saving relationship with Jesus Christ. It is a supernatural sovereign work of God the Holy Spirit, irresistibly and effectually drawing out those who are chosen to God. And we must never dummy down the message and try to make this which is foolishness to the world appear to be, in their eyes, brilliant. Because at the very center of our message hangs a crucified Savior who is now seated at the right hand of God the Father.